all empires come to an end and uh, the US dollar empire is teetering and they need to watch themselves very carefully. The British pound, of course, had its day and the um, silver denarius of the Roman Empire had its day. Very long day, in fact. But what did they do with it when it was it used to be made of silver? And then it became 75% silver and over 400 years it went down to 0.5% silver. They literally, the word debasement of a currency came from taking the base metal out of the silver denarius. So ultimately that's what they're doing. They, they've, they've told us that this, this, I promised to pay the bearer on demand, 20 pounds, but I'm going to make a lot of them and I'm going to just fire them out. Right. And once a government does it, it's so hard to switch that spigot off because it feels so good, yeah. because it's a very long delay between doing it and the repercussions. Do me a favor, picture your favorite crypto app or exchange. Got it? Now I have five questions for you. Question number one, does your favorite app or exchange have fiat on and off ramps that do not charge you crazy fees? Question number two, does your app actually help you time your investments with machine learning and algorithms? Question number three, does your app or favorite exchange connect to multiple exchanges to get you best rates, best liquidity, but also mitigate the risk of a central failure of one single order book? Question number four, is your favorite app or exchange Swiss made, but also licensed and regulated in the EU so that you can feel 100% reassured, but also sleep well at night? Question number five, is your favorite app or exchange fully aligned with your principles and values, 100% community-centric and not VC-backed? So if your answer to any of these questions is a no, what are you waiting for? Download the Swissborg Wealth app, join the New Era Wealth Management, and enjoy the ride. Dear crypto community blockchain boys across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we have another mind-blowing guest and a returnee, Richard L. C. of Electronium, a great, great person with a great mind. Thank you so much, Rich, for coming on the show again. Oh. Boom. How uh, have you been, my friend? It's um, been a, a year and three, four months yeah, at least. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. You've got me mistaken with someone else, though, the great mind guy. I wish he was here. He's so good, <laughs> wouldn't it? We could pick his brain. Yeah, it's so good to see no, you again, to see Rich. You and, well. you know, really, really it's great good. to see all the progress that you guys have been doing since then. But uh, to kick off, yeah, tell me, game, tell me, how have you been in the past year? Is yeah, what's I mean, new? Busy, busy, crazy, busy. Well, like you guys, you know, I've been watching <laughs> Swiss Borg with, with uh, you know, uh, just you, you've done a cracking job with what you're doing there. Loved following it, and uh, yeah, we, we're really, really busy. Crazy busy. Uh, we're just recruiting 10 more coders because we're so busy with any task. This is a freelance platform. Yeah, it's sort of yeah. economic thing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's been exciting times, as always. It's always busy, right? It yeah. seems like it never ends, busy the busyness. It's always, always. Our uh, auditing company um, turned around and said, uh, where's your exit in this, Rich? And I went, there is no exit. Is I'm no tied exit. in forever. I, I, there, there are, nobody, there's nobody, it's not a traditional business. It's a totally different business to anything else that's out there. And in crypto land, there's no escape. And you're building like a new like paradigm by saying there's no exit, right? That's really yeah. different from the traditional space. And I'll ask you a lot about Electronium, the ETN token, a little bit later yeah, during yeah, the interview. Yeah. And we want to hear all the updates and the roadmap. Super excited about that. But first and foremost, we we're kind of chatting about DeFi at the moment. And it's funny because you have a bit of a skeptical view on, you know, DeFi and yield farming. And obviously it's that topic is everywhere. DeFi bubble, yeah, DeFi this, is. that, that. I'd love to hear your thoughts because you have a really interesting angle to it. Yeah, well, I'm not sure it's that interesting. It's more, it's more of a uh, of a stark fear, really. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's like the deer in the headlights. Uh, in the early days of crypto, um, we, we saw some horror stories of um, 
uh, you know, uh, out and out uh, blockchain mistakes in, in terms of DeFi, nearly all of it's running, of course, uh, in Ethereum's ERC-20 space. And those contracts have to be uh, written ex with, with, uh, you know, with, with great detail, attention to detail. Quite often they're not. Uh, and we've seen some horror stories already with uh, tokens locked up and, uh, and, and lost funds. And people are risking quite a lot uh, for a potential yield. Uh, and I hope that they get that yield and it all works out well, of course. But uh, right back when, you know, we're, we're, we're old hands in crypto. And if you don't own the keys, you don't own the crypto. It's largely true of if you are one of a multi-key signature set and you don't have the others, you don't own the crypto as well. Uh, and so I'm, I'm a bit wary of DeFi as it stands. It's in its infancy and uh, it's a babe in arms and we know what babe in arms do quite regularly with both parents. Uh, <laughs> something explodes out oh. in, a, in a surprising way. And that's what's happening with DeFi at the moment. <laughs> that's a really interesting view. I love the analogy as well. And a lot of people are talking about the risks these days, which is great because, you know, in every bubble, there are lots of risks and hopefully some great technology will surface. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, poo-pooing the whole thing. Just that it's early days and you should manage your risk. Manage your risk. But I think you have a really good point about not your keys, not your coins, because in this whole yielding kind of world, we, we don't really know how much yield we're going to get. We don't really know where the tokens are. Is that your biggest concern right at the moment that's kind of holding you back from entering this whole yield farming? Thing? Uh, yeah, and uh, yes. Uh, so so uh, there's some dangers in, in that respect. You don't know what yield you're going to get. So you don't know whether you're going to end up with the tokens back even. That, that's the reality. You are risking your tokens and, and that's fine. That's what you're doing when you put your money in the bank. Not that you get any interest in a bank now, but do you remember when Iceland, everyone was putting their money into Iceland. I had friends of mine had money in all the Icelandic banks because they were paying 11%, 14%. Why were they paying that? Well, they were paying it because there was a systemic risk. And when the systemic risk came along and the Icelandic banks collapsed, uh, they found that they'd lost their capital. Uh, so my fear for DeFi is that. Um, uh, and alongside that, there are, you need to be very careful about which DeFi projects, right? There, there, there are, there's DeFi and there's DeFi. Um, and you look at some of the monster successes of um, like the decentralized exchange, uh, Uniswap, which has just been an extraordinary yeah, story. Growth. Extraordinary story. Yeah. And, and I love it. So that's, you know, you've got these, you've got these wonderful things coming out as well. And the more decentralization there is, the better as far as I'm concerned. So all those things are great. And at the other end of the scale, you look through some of the top 100 projects on CMC right now, you're going to buy some DeFi projects that I wouldn't put my money in. I, I'm, I don't really think you should, but people don't do their research. You know, yeah. they just, they take things at face value and off it goes. Sometimes yeah. even ridiculous things where people tweet and say, oh, well, send me your Bitcoin and I'll double it. You know, half of the Twitter sphere tweeted this out and people fired off their crypto. Yeah, Elon Musk and everybody, right? All the accounts were hacked yeah. and yeah. So, you know, if people are, sorry if you're one of those people, but if people are daft enough to do that, then they're definitely daft enough to get pulled into a DeFi scam. So uh, be very cautious with your crypto, guys. You know, it's hard earned. You, uh, you, you've earned it, you've got it, you own it. So make sure you, you hold it and use it wisely. Yeah, being wise is very, very important. I think you mentioned a really good point when it comes to uh, smart contract auditing because there, there is a really cool website actually called DeFi Safety. Mm. Uh, very, you know, uh, old school website. The color is poor design, but the information <laughs> yeah. is so cool, Brilliant. you know. It talks about, you know, all the audits that have been done, yeah. the documentation behind it, the risk documentation as well. So like you said, choosing wisely is, yeah. is the key point here, yeah. right? And and. Uh, good money management, right? So yeah. we, uh, if people have ever taken an equity position, uh, you, you don't you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. So you know if you've got a spread, don't don't say I'm going to take 100% of my crypto and drop it into this DeFi project. One, spread it around, and two, only use a percentage. You know, and th and that should be true across crypto in general, anyway. Yeah, and you mentioned something really interesting, Rich, earlier when we were talking before the show, that some of these coins and tokens have reached, you know, 300, 400 million market cap, but there's no use case in the coin or token. There is yeah. nothing to do with it. It's just purely speculative. Yeah. While there are good projects with real world yeah. use cases, right? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, well, you, you know, uh, you, you know, you, you, you've got a project that should be up there as a top, top, top 20, top 30 uh, uh, token, as far as I'm concerned. Swiss so Borg, brilliant. And... Um, you know, you, you see these things where actually tons of effort has been plowed in and and they're going to be in for the long game. So these are going to be long term players and they're going to be around, uh, you know, for decades, not 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 flash in the pan. And then you see 
let's call them upstarts, but you, you, you get a little project. I don't know how much you guys know looking out there at, uh, into the public about ERC20 contracts and creating these things, but you know, you could download, we could go and download a, an ERC20 contract off the internet. We could change the name, you know, copy and paste. What does that bit do? Anyone know what that bit do? No, I don't know what it does. Ah, it doesn't matter. We'll just skip that bit. How, can, we, can we comment it out? Yeah. So we, we, we monkey around with something off the internet and by the end of the evening, we could have a, a, a new token launched in the DeFi space. We can, we can whack it out there onto Uniswap and suddenly we're in the market, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a terrifying thing as much as it's a wonderful thing. You know, it, it, it's got both of those yeah, things. Both sides, so yeah. um, real world usage, again, it's about doing your research and doing your homework. You know, we know we've got massive real world usage in Electronium, probably right up there with the top 10 projects in terms of real people actually using it day to day. But that does not equate to price, volume, or any of that speculative side. So the speculative side is almost blissfully unaware of real world usage. Whereas if you go into the equities markets, that's, that's not the case. You know, the fundamentals, which you would have heard uh, uh, hundreds of times, that fundamental analysis in crypto just doesn't seem to exist yet. It's going to happen one day, isn't it? It's inevitable, I suppose. I really hope so. And <laughs> obviously, you guys have a huge community of Electronium. So like you said, like the adoption, the real world use cases, tokenomics don't necessarily reflect on the price all the time, which is unfortunate. But do you think we'll get there eventually? It's just a matter of maturity as we move forward or? Yeah, I mean, inevitably, projects that don't do anything eventually will, will, will disappear, won't they? That, that yeah. is the case. I do know of one project that's in the top 30 that uh, has manipulated its way there. Um, it, it's not, uh, it, nobody holds it except the people who made it and it sits up there. So they've artificially inflated it. Uh, they're quite proud of themselves. I, I find it laughable that it's feasible to do it, but that's the reality of today's crypto market. You know, there, there's still a lot of things around that, that probably shouldn't be. But at the same time, there are these fantastic projects out there that really are able to, to make a difference. From my personal point of view, I think um, if you're looking at a project on its fundamentals, does it solve a problem? You know, uh, Swiss ball solves a problem, right? So you, you immediately, uh, you, and you save money, which is, which is you're solving a problem and saving money. That's, that's a sort of a double win. Electronium, people talk about the unbanked all the time. It's every crypto, we, we, we help the unbanked, we solve the unbanked problem, but, but they don't because yeah. there's no way for people to get those tokens. So, uh, and there's nowhere to spend those tokens. There's no, there's, there's really, they're not really that usable at all. And so we, we solved a lot of those problems like instant payment, app to app, so sort of peer to peer transfer, all those sorts of things made it usable in the real world. Uh, but that, that hasn't really rippled through to the market. But equally, um, you know, we, we said we'll build this up and, uh, and get mass adoption. So that's what we get up to do every day. You know, a lot of projects get up to, to just try and do something with their price. And that's all they're interested in. And that's why they're not really looking at the real world. Whereas if you get out of bed in the morning to say, right, OK, what deals can we do? How can we pull this together in the real world? How can we get more people using it? How can we make it more accessible to the real people? How can we empower more people? Then, um, then that's what you focus on. I think everything else will, will come together as, as time progresses. And then there's an inevitability about the size the size of your brand, you, you, it's, there's an inevitability on the other side, I suspect. I, I can't really talk about those. You know what it's like talk, talking about pricing. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. lawyers will fly in on, uh, yeah. <laughs> on some sort of drone and start opening up. Yeah, exactly. I, I can't be responsible for what happens. Or one of my, one of the guys has just woken up in his pod. You know, I'm sure they sleep in pods, those guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's so awesome, Rich, because you guys had hardware, you have utility in your token, you have, you offer tasks as well for the, the community to earn money not just invest or use so you really have a full spectrum and i remember last year you know when i when we first met you know a few months earlier you were in africa a few months later again you had another trip to another country in africa so you're really trying to help those in need is that still the vision for electronium yeah i mean uh, i think a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of people in the market as well also think that electronium is a charity and uh, it isn't, you it know, isn't, we're, we're, yeah. a, we're a, uh, a business that I'm building a sustainable business model from, but that doesn't mean that we can't empower people at the same time. And, and funnily enough, it's the empowerment of people that we see as making our business model work. So it's quite hard to go in uh, to, to an existing. So if, say for instance, you said, well, I'm gonna set up in competition with Amazon. Frankly, nobody in the world has got the money to do it. 
Well, if you're a, uh, uh, an upstart crypto as perhaps we were in, in 2017, the only way that we could, uh, could, could build a huge market and actually truly get that market share was to do something that other people weren't doing. And that space was very much that unbanked and yeah. people were talking about it, but they weren't actually delivering yeah, anything that was useful. Exactly. So uh, we went into that space. You know, obviously we've got millions of, of people in that space, um, uh, which has been great. But uh, but there is quite a lot of you know regulatory hurdles yeah. and there's all sorts of things you know to, that you have to overcome. So there's a lot of the dull part of business to do yeah. to get there. But ultimately, the business will be a sustainable business. I.e., it will make money, and uh, uh, you know our business plan is 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 solid. We've got um, a, a ton of um, uh, of the ICO funds uh, are there more more in fact than we started with, which is always nice. Uh, so. Um, uh, we, you know, we're in a really good position to, to, to make Electronium the massive success that we said it would be. If you don't count 4 million users as a massive success, yeah, you know, a lot of projects million. out there would be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, 4 million. Yeah. Yes. But, but, you know, we've always been after those tens of millions uh, of users. And more importantly than that is, is, the, is, the, is the millions of actual transactions from real people on the ground. You know, so we've got hundreds of thousands of people topping up their airtime. Let's make that millions of people topping up their airtime. And we've got some great things coming as well. So, we, you know, well, I won't bore you with them all. But no, uh, no, no. I should, actually, I do want to hear a little bit of the uh, roadmap. We've got, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got uh, we, we're just dealing with some people. We've got one guy we're dealing with down in Africa who's got 700 shops. I appreciate in the continent of Africa, 700 is not that much, but he's integrating ETN as we speak. So our, our back end guys are integrating um, with him for, his, for the pay, instant payment uh, API. Uh, we've got um, uh, medicines, uh, food, uh, construction materials, um, and we've got some gaming, uh, and uh, uh, I think we've got, uh, it's not quite, but I'm probably putting the mockers on it a little bit here, but I think we've got a, a pay TV channel as well that will take in ETN. So we've got loads of things. We've got a big queue now to integrate to our API. So it's quite exciting. We've got, like I say, 10 developers we've just taken on. Or no, sorry, we haven't taken them on yet. We've got two that we're taking on and a pipeline of people that are going through the process. But the idea is we have more people because we've got so many API integrations that we've got to get into that app. So. Uh, that's quite exciting. I'd that, like to get Changely in the app. Changely goes live in the next few days. I might have just outed that. I'm not sure you uh, said that. <laughs> so Changely goes live, and Changely has got the uh, really easy, a really easy interface. So when we've got the ETN purchase of tasks in any task, which is being coded as we speak, it'd be nice for people to be able to easily buy ETN through the app. So once again, integrating that. So we've got tons and tons of stuff that's coming, just tons of it. Because now that you already have like a massive community, is really the focus on the B2B to C side? Is that really what you're going to focus on this year and next year or? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, what we've got to do is, I mean, we still any task, uh, we, we put quite a lot of effort into any task and any task, uh, we've got 10,000 tasks listed now, more than 500,000. So we just, just clicked over uh, 500,000 plus users are registered on the platform. Um, there are still only thousands of, uh, of sales. Uh, and so we've got a massive drive with uh, three agencies to bring, in, um, to bring in more buyers. And so we've got quite a few changes to the site to make the search algorithms better, make the review system better, because we've got a few problems with reviews. If someone gives you a crappy service, you want to give them a bad review, yeah. right? And that's what we want, because we want the good ones to float to the top and the bad ones to float yeah. to the bottom. But it turns out if we give people a refund, you can't actually give them a bad review. So there's a few things that we, oh. we're fixing. We're on top of all this stuff. So the next, probably the next four or five months is going to be getting any task really polished so that it's literally as good a platform as any of the others out there. Uh, and that means that uh, these people that we're servicing will, uh, you know, will, will thrive. And that's the ETN ecosystem in itself, which is great. And remember that every fiat purchase, this is a thing people don't get as well, is most projects rely utterly on the crypto community. So someone who's interested in crypto has to speculate and buy some. That's literally how the crypto market works. There's virtually nothing outside of that. With any task, we accept credit cards and debit cards to buy a task. And it's almost transparent to the buyer that there's any crypto involved. And then at the back end, we do the magic and convert it into ETN and fire it over to the, to the person who sold the task. And that person can top up, they can buy different things with it. Uh, they can exchange it amongst themselves and we, we're seeing people utilizing this and we're actually seeing etn circulate so someone will buy something from a street vendor the street vendor will buy something from someone else and that someone else will buy something from the person who bought from the street vendor you know oh, nice. this is yeah. this is velocity of money it's not money lawyers again whacking me but it's it, we would in in economics it would be calling it the velocity of money but it's now the velocity of crypto things are actually this is what 
the crypto community have dreamed of doing. So I'm really excited to be part of it. So we've got all that kind of stuff going on. I lost my track there. I got so excited. <laughs> but we've got all that stuff going on. So, um, uh, well, I've forgotten where I was, but... <laughs> but the velocity I of money, want... I think that's... I'll go back to drinking my beer, I think. <laughs> it has no effect on me. <laughs> the velocity of money is a really interesting topic because, you know, like a lot of people say that there's a lack of velocity from, you know, all the, the projects that yeah. I'm just taking and it's not being transferred and there's... That's exactly right. Exactly, exactly that. Oh, that's where I was going. I was saying fiat money's coming in. So those people with the transparency of it, they're, they're paying thousands and thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars to buy tasks. Well, that, um, that now is, is us buying off exchanges. So we're, we're buying that ETN. So I just want everybody to be well aware we are not using the, the pre-mine ETN reward pool that's just still sitting there completely dormant at the moment. But everything to do with any task is a completely separate entity. And they are, they, that, that, that entity group is buying the ETN from the market. So all that fiat money is coming into the crypto without them being speculators. They're not interested in speculating. They just want to buy a task. And the person buying the task is not a speculator. He just wants to get paid. And suddenly we have this thing that crypto should be. It's, it's, a, it's a thing of beauty. We are actually transferring value around the world at virtually no cost, which is what crypto is for. That's, that's literally its fundamental that's purpose. What it is, yeah. And so when I talk to people who are crypto purists, and we all get a bit excited because yeah. we're actually making crypto do what crypto should be doing rather than being something that you talk about down the pub, open up the app and go, I've made 10%, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, nobody's made 10% today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today was a tough day. Today it was, was a, a really tough, tough day. day in crypto land. Blood on the streets. But I guess, you know, like the whole bubble thing needed to burst a little bit. I think the, there was yeah. a little bit of exaggeration, too much speculation, as you're saying. And, and uh, I'd love to hear more about ETN because you just mentioned, uh, obviously, uh, the payments, you know, micro payments and, and all the use case and utilities. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the evolution of ETN. Where do we go from here? Well, so the first thing is to get the AnyTask site polished. And then we've got quite a lot of other sites that we've got our eyes on, BDIs on, that, that say, for instance, let, let's pick one out of the hat. So if we look at, there are lots and lots and lots of agencies and platforms that offer translation. And what do people want to do when they buy translation? They want to buy translation at the best possible price with the best possible quality. And that's Largely, we translate a lot of things. Uh, you probably do as well. The whole platform's translated. You end up sending off these JSON files or YAML files and getting them translated at some expense. Well, we now use any task. It's still a bit fiddly because they, they have to send back JSON. But there are platforms out there that have, that have built a really nice interface, a nice SaaS-based system that enables translation, except they're paying translators $25 an hour. Well, hold on, guys. There's a massive market of every language you can think of out there that don't have a bank account. But let me tell you, they can speak and write perfect Tamil or, or Hindu or, or any other language you can think of. They can write it and, they, and they'd be brilliant at the job and they'd be more than happy to take two or three dollars, four dollars an hour. So there is a massive revolution to take place in that industry among a, a, a great deal of others that we've that we've highlighted we've got some uh, approaches to make so uh, and the reason that they will say okay let's integrate etn is because it enables their users to get a better value they can still make their exact same margin of course so they they they, they can still marginalize it but but they can expand their business because they're undercutting their competitors yeah. so everybody will leave the competitors and come to them and that would have so we'd have been Empowered them in that respect, and then you're empowering their users. So it, it, it works every in every single way, uh, and at the same time, uh, we are then growing the the ways that you can earn ETN, and at the same time, at the back end, we're growing the ways to spend ETN. We have uh, we have one project that's uh, that's been integrated. The API is written. All we've got to do is pull the lever, but the lawyers are still wrestling in the mud or or, or fighting to the death or whatever it is they have to do. Uh, to, to get us live. We have an amazing integration already written that, that opens up 28,000 places to spend ETN in a country. But trust me, these deals are so hard to yeah, pull together. It's yeah. ridiculous. Uh, so um, it's not quite there yet. But we wrote the API, so we, we, we're, into the, we're into the system. But, uh, but sometimes it just takes such a long time. But when we get our FCA uh, registration number uh, Christmas time, um, by the 31st of December, I think that we, we, we've got to get that. And what I'm hoping is, even though it's only a registration with the FCA and, and crypto is not fully regulated by the FCA yet, what I'm hoping is it starts to give companies around the world 
uh, a feeling that, that actually they're dealing with somebody that, that will have longevity and does understand regulation is important and trust is important. And so if you're going to integrate a crypto, do you integrate a random ERC20 token or do you integrate with somebody who has taken the time and trouble to register with the FCA and has implemented an AML policy, an anti-money laundry policy and, and, and a system uh, and a KYC system and blah, 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 blah. So I'm hoping that that uh, starts to smooth away. In fact, I know it does because even us talking about the fact that, that we're based in London when so many of these projects have no base or they're based in Dubai or Liechtenstein perhaps or Cayman Islands is a classic, yeah. of course. So, you know, I, I think the, the long-term um, prospects for, for Electronium are super good. That sounds really, really exciting. And you mentioned some like kind of components of the, the CFI world, you know, mm. like just go, I know we're going kind of back to DeFi, but you talked about KYC, ML and stuff like that. And some of the DeFi guys like, no, I don't want to do yeah, 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 KYC and stuff like that. Um, what, what, is your, what is your vision? Recently, I, I saw this article on Coindesk saying that DeFi is one extreme, CFI is one extreme. It's always the best of both worlds and they need to work with each other in a way to pro provide something for the masses. Right? Yeah. Not just DeFi for the geeks, but DeFi for the masses. Yeah. Or, how do, how do you see that evolving? Yeah, well, I, I, I uh, if it was down to me personally, you know, you, people I think have seen me talk before, uh, bless bless them, my lawyers watch my videos sometimes, they're like, there's so much hate, from, it's for me, but Rich, I like you, I'm like that, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't hate you personally, I really like you personally, but just lawyers, they just drive everything crazy, don't they? <laughs> and that's the world, and, and regulation is a bit like that as well. I understand that the regulations get built to protect people, but at the same time, it's not a bit of red tape, you know, it's, it's a massive barrel of red tape that you pour out and everyone trips over and, and no one can get through it. You have to, it's like barbed wire clawing through the red tape. It's not, it's not a simple thing anymore. It's, it's horrendous. And so the more red tape there is, the more people are pushed into those periphery where they're, they're like, well, no, I'm going to do this without any authority. And then you come into that personal liberty. Well, why the hell shouldn't I do it? Why shouldn't I have the freedom to control my own finances? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, we're, we're obviously Again, old school crypto people, yeah. we're obviously going to be libertarians and we believe in that. And then here I am sitting here as a as a as a dull corporate, you know, drone who's who's built a system that's got KYC and AML. So how do I fit in when I'm when I claim to be a libertarian? But the answer is that both can exist. And what I love is that we can exist so we can give people a, a, a portal into earning some crypto. They can have that crypto but that opens up the world. They can jump into Bitcoin really easily, right? There are yeah. there are atomic swaps out there with, from ETN to, to Bitcoin. No KYC or anything else, nothing to do with me. I'm not advocating the use, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but people can do it. They can jump into Bitcoin, they can jump into some Monero, they could jump into ERC20, they could get into DeFi, all that. Well, they couldn't do that because they were unbanked. So there was no way for them to get it. So by us opening the door to that, by, by having a, a, a system within the regulatory boundaries it also gives them the freedom if they want to they can hop outside that regulatory boundary that's nothing to do with me what they do with the etn is entirely up to them so i like that i like the fact that i mean i'm obviously a massive advocate of bitcoin have been uh, you know well not since the beginning didn't know about it from the beginning but for, for many many years probably since 2014 maybe a bit earlier so um big advocate of bitcoin well you can buy some bitcoin you know yeah. you can buy it with the etn you earn but yeah. unless there's a way for you to earn bitcoin which and i know there's been a few attempts at that and and may there be many more but you know you get the idea we're building a system that works with crypto crypto is the thing that can change the world we're just a little piece of that yeah and i love the fact that people can earn it right and mm. they don't have to buy it immediately That's right? Exactly it's, right it's a, yeah. such a because nice way to get into it in the beginning right yeah because you don't need to do a great deal. I mean, we've got people, uh, just seen another few people listing them because we've got, if you run an e-commerce site, uh, then every product you have needs to be cut out. And it's a tedious job. And if you give it to a UK or a US designer, they're gonna be sitting on that seat at 20 quid or $20, $25 an hour, maybe, maybe plus some more. And they're gonna be sitting there doing a tedious job that anyone could do. Well, there are apps that enable you to cut that out. You can zoom in and cut out with some great detail and you end up with a PNG with a transparency. We've got people churning those out at less than 75 cents a cutout um, where, where people are being charged vast amounts of money. So we've got people um, creating now already. I've seen um, some people taking all their header banners from their e-commerce site and 
because it would have been expensive locally they haven't done it but what they're doing is they've got people christmasifying putting putting little bits of holly on them and things getting ready for christmas so they can suddenly strip out their 25 category headers at Christmas, pop them in, it's cost them peanuts, and suddenly they've made their site Christmassy ready for Christmas, they can do Valentine's Day. There are things that people don't even necessarily think to outsource, but when they do, they're actually really easy things for people to do, but you just wouldn't get them for 75 cents an hour uh, in the US or the UK. So uh, it makes total sense to outsource. Everybody should outsource something, uh, and it's gonna grow and grow and grow, and if those people can then earn that and have it in ETN, some of them sit on it, some of them want to cash it out straight away, some people want to buy some airtime, some people have spent it with, with a local friend or whatever. There's a couple of thousand places that have registered with us that are accepting ETN. So we have a thing called ETN Everywhere, which is a, a website that, that people can register with and say, oh, I'm taking ETN now, and that's getting busy, busier and busier. So yeah, it's an exciting time to, to, uh, to be in crypto. Uh, obviously, we've, I hope that we're out of that bear market now as well and back into a bull market. You wouldn't believe it today, but yeah. I, I hope that we are because uh, that, that changes people's sentiment. Um, we, um, I work with Ollie, you, who you've met, he's here. Uh, Ollie uh, was doing some research for an article today and he found the last 20 articles that the BBC wrote, 18 of them were negative and two of them were neutral about crypto. I mean, that's still how the mainstream media portray crypto, which is a tragedy, isn't it? It is tragedy, and it was kind of like that in the 2017. I did the yeah. same research on YouTube, on CNBC, and Bitcoin mm. and crypto, and it was something in the same ratio, maybe not as harsh, yeah. but and they wouldn't kind of say it themselves, but they would invite someone who would go against oh, yeah. the, the philosophy yeah. of Bitcoin. So it's not, it's not us, you know, it's uh, our guest. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, <laughs> we didn't say it. <laughs> we didn't say anything bad about Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, but Bitcoin, I, I guess my last question, that's a perfect transition to Bitcoin. You just mm. mentioned you're a huge believer in mm, Bitcoin. Uh, nowadays, as you know, QE has gone through the roof. Mm. Uh, so people are starting to realize that uh, bread and woods happen. You know, the paper yeah, uh, yeah. money does, is not backed by anything. It's just a pure imagination. There's no real value to it. Um, do you really think that these days, obviously the UK has done lots of QE, the US has done a lot, in the EU has done a lot. Uh, is this a bullish, bullish scenario? Is it one of the most bullish scenarios for Bitcoin that you can imagine? Or how do you see things going forward? I, 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 totally and utterly, it's got to be, hasn't it? Uh, all empires uh, come to an end and uh, the US dollar empire is teetering and they need to watch themselves very carefully. The British pound, of course, had its day uh, and the Dutch guilder had its day and, you know, there's, uh, and, and the um, silver denarius of the Roman empire had its day. Very long day, in fact. But what did they do with it when it, was, it used to be made of silver and then it became 75% silver and over 400 years it went down to 0.5% silver. They literally, the word debasement of a currency came from the, the taking the base metal out of the silver denarius. So ultimately, that's what they're doing. They, they've, they've told us that this, this, I promised to pay the bearer on demand, 20 pounds, but 20, what's, what is 20 pounds? 20 pounds of what? It used to be 20 pounds of sterling silver. Well, I can accept that. Silver has a natural rarity. It's difficult to find. Bitcoin has a natural rarity. It's mathematically modeled. Uh, and that mathematical rarity is not going to change. So a chancellor of an exchequer is not going to say, we promised to pay the bearer on demand 20 pounds, but I'm going to make a lot of them and I'm going to just fire them out. <laughs> right. And once a government does it or, 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 or uh, you know, an empire does it, it's so hard to switch that spigot off because it feels so good because there's a very long delay between doing it and the repercussions. If it, if it happened that you fired all that money out overnight and the very next day, your inflation weight went through the roof, you know, that would be easy to, to control. But it, it can take years and decades even. You fire this money out in an in a, in a almost fire hose manner. You are, you are, without a shadow of a doubt, making your currency worth less. They, they're, they're not even hiding that. They want that. They want inflation, uh, which is great. But is it great for people who are savers? You know, people who have actually strived and worked hard for their lives and put some money away terrible for savers mm. so i understand that at the moment it's under the guise of saving the economy but then the next one will be another guise and another guise and another guise 
they've turned the spigot on, they can't turn it off, they don't know how to turn it off, they all want to get voted back in, and so they have to do this have happy to, feel good, yeah. let's just keep on printing. So yes, I think uh, I'm personally, again, you know, neither of us are giving any investment advice, but I'm personally um, bullish about Bitcoin simply because it's a mathematical certainty that there will not be any more Bitcoins. There are only 21 million of them that will ever exist. Most of them, well, not most of them, a hell of a lot of them are lost anyway and can never be re recaptured. So, um, you know, there is more than 21 million millionaires in America. So yeah. if every millionaire in America just decided to own one Bitcoin, it's physically, mathematically impossible. Yeah. That's my very long answer to a very short question. And, uh, and I, it's I, a really long but awesome answer. Yeah, wow. You. What a, and the passion, I can feel it, you know, it's <laughs> warming up this, this uh, balcony right here. So yeah, but thank you so much, Rich, for no, such an you. amazing interview and always dropping some gems and, and it's such a good positive vibe that you bring always to the show. You know, it's a lot of fun to talk to you. Thank you very uh, much. Thank so you. if we want to follow you, what are the best places to follow you? Is it Twitter? Is it LinkedIn? And where are the most active these um, days? Uh, do you know what? I mean, I, funnily enough, if you if, don't don't go there, right? Because I'm now <laughs> making people go there. But at Richard Ells, he's not me. It's a, it's a fake Richard oh, Ells. Oh no! Which I think is brilliant that someone would want to fake me. Why would you want to fake me? I'm a 50 year old git. Uh, so I don't know why anyone would want to fake me. But um, uh, don't go to there. I'm not personally on Twitter, but Electronium is. So Electronium. at Electronium on Twitter. Uh, or, or, or Facebook forward slash Electronium on Facebook. I'm sure there's others too. Go to our website, Electronium.com. Have a little look at the project. Uh, and, and one thing I will say, um, if, if I may, which is uh, go to anytask.com. Yeah, have a look. A buy cool a task project. for a dollar. Just go on and have, buy a task. It's got money back guarantee anyway, so you can't lose anything. Buy something silly. Buy, have a little look at it because actually the person you're buying from, you, you might well be changing their life. For, and, and the four or five dollars goes and buys them a, a bag of maize meal that, that feeds their family. It's just crazy how good that can be. So have a little look at anytask.com as well. It's such a great initiative. We look forward to the updates on any task and we'll put all the links below. So thank, thank you, you so much, much, Rich. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and blast that bell notification so that you can get access to these brilliant minds and timeless interviews premiering at a PC near you every Wednesday, 8 o'clock UK time. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you next week.